Hi, how you doing? My name is Les Stark, and I'm, he I'm the author of Hempstone Heritage, a book about the history of the Lancaster County hemp industry in Pennsylvania. We used to have a really big hemp industry here. We grew it for over 150 years, and uh, I'm here at the Hans Herr House, which was built in 1714, approximately. But we're in the heart of the very first permanent settlement of Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. Uh, the settlers came here in 1710, which was about 20 years after William Penn founded um, Pennsylvania. But it's a uh, fascinating place. And it's uh, the Hans Herr House, and uh, this is the Hans Herr Museum. It's a pretty interesting place. And I recommend everybody to get a chance to come out here, but I'm going to show you why we're here. Over here you can see they have a collection of millworks with the old, uh, old sundial on the top. That's pretty interesting. You have various sorts of grist mill stones and so forth. And at the very end, you'll see something interesting over here. A conical shaped stone that most people are probably unfamiliar with. But if we come over here, uh, I'm not sure if this is going to, you're going to be able to read it through the camera, but it has, uh, up here you see the millstones, and here's that funny conical shaped stone at the end. And it has a, a description here. It says, these millstones stand in silent testimony to the importance of milling in Lancaster County. The first mill was built on uh, only a few years after the Mennonites arrived in 1710. Vital to agriculture, the mills increased in number to over 200 by 1839. Most were grist mills where grain was processed, yet there were also mills where hemp was crushed for rope. That's the interesting fact that I'm trying to get at. And that's what my book is about, of course. I have to get that endorsement in there. Hempstone Heritage, don't forget it. I want you all to buy it because it tells all about uh, what I'm going to tell you about. So. This millstone right here is uh, it's a nice specimen. It's larger than some of the other hemp millstones that we've seen. It's uh, slightly different in its shape. It's uh, longer than the, the stones that are available at the Landis Valley Museum. If you'll see my uh, video from Hemp History Week 2, uh, I mean uh, Year 2. But anyway, between 1720 and 1870, there were over 100 water-powered mills for processing hemp fiber just in Lancaster County alone, and there were dozens more mills for processing fiber in all the uh, counties uh, surrounding Lancaster County. Now, the hemp stalk had a fiber. If you were, it, the fiber goes all the way along the stalk. If you were to strip the bark off of that stalk, that's where you get the hemp fiber. So. Um, in my other videos, if you watch, you'll see I do an explanation, a demonstration where I show how the farmers took the hemp rake and, and got the fiber out of the stalk. Uh, but after uh, they got the fiber out of the stalk, the fiber was still rough. And if you're going to make linen and homespun clothing, it needs to go through extra processing. So this stone was sitting uh, high up in, in, the grit, in the hemp mill, and uh, there was... Uh, an iron axle that was inserted through this stone, the cavity of this stone. And uh, Tyler, could you come over here and show the cavity of this stone? Yeah. You see how, so there was a wooden block that was inserted into this stone and then the iron axle went through that. And uh, it rolled on its side. At the end of that axle was a big iron hoop and there was a chain that was attached to the driving arm. And of course, uh, uh, you have to look at the diagram that I have available in my book, Hempstone Heritage. But, you know, of course, uh, the water comes, turns the wheels, and it turns a series of gears, and it turns this driving arm in a circle. And that's what propels this stone to roll on its side. It was built conical so that it would roll evenly in a circular motion over top of that fiber, and that softened up the fiber. It broke up some of the more firmly adhering bark that was still sticking to the fiber. And, uh, you know, they got it ready for the spinning wheel. And, uh, you know, that fiber then, it went through a series of uh, uh, combs, and then it was put on uh, the spinning wheel, spun in the yarn, and then it was given to the weaver. He put it on the loom. He 
woven in the cloth that was given back to the family where they used it for everything imaginable, everything from tough coarse cloth to fine linen and everything in between. They used it for uh, coarse cloth like rugs and curtains and tablecloths and towels and napkins and handkerchief, grain bags, Conestoga wagon covers, uh, sailcloth for uh, the sailing ships in Philadelphia. And uh, they used it all the way up to, like I said, fine linen and, and everything in between. It could be mixed with flax and cotton and wool and silk. So it could be achieve a variety of textures uh, uh, depending on uh, what you wanted it for. So it's pretty neat to live in Lancaster County and have museums where we have access, where you can actually come to the Hans Herr House here and you see this just gorgeous, beautiful place and you can actually put your hands on a hempstone and uh, see it for your own eyes because it's pretty neat to put your hands on uh, something and have a, a living, tangible connection with the past is uh, pretty interesting. Uh, several times a year, year here at the Hans Herr House, they have different events, heritage days, and uh, I'm not sure about the exact uh, names of the uh, festivals and events, but uh, I'm going to put a link in the, the description for a link to Hans Herr House, and there will also be a link to buy my book. Hemstone Heritage, which will tell you much, much more information about the once great tradition and uh, industry of hemp growing that we had here in Lancaster County. But um, I sometimes uh, set up here. I set up here a few times. One time I was in costume of a 17th century uh, or 1700s um, farmer who grew hemp, and it's pretty interesting. I sell some books here. I usually set up like right over here. But then all in here, you have all kinds of craftsmen like. Back there, you ha in that building there, you have like, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I believe that's where uh, the blacksmith works, and and all in here you have they have farm machinery, uh, old-fashioned farm machinery, and and all sorts of things. But that over there is the Hans Herr House, and you just see it's so beautiful, and uh, it's pretty neat. And there's a lot of really neat stories if you're interested in uh, the history of Lancaster County, and and it's just a pretty neat place. Anyway, there's tons more I could say but I just wanted to point out that this is Sunday I'm actually a little late it's at the end of hemp history week three it's an event to um, tell people illustrate the local history of hemp in towns all across America and it's put on by vote hemp and the hemp industries Association and uh, many businesses that um, uh, sell hemp products and support hemp what we're trying to do is make an illegal, legitimate industry in the United States again so that farmers can grow hemp, to be use it for biofuel, so they can use it for paper, so they can use it for hemp-based uh, fiberboard and make hemp houses and hempcrete and all the various things that you can use hemp for. It's a shame now that they're allowed to grow it in Canada. We can import it. We can make food products like my good friend Sean Patrick House of Hempsels makes hemp pretzels called Hempsels. They're great pretzels, and he can import the seed from Canada. He can make food products out of it. He can eat it and sell it. It's no problem, but we can't grow it here, and that's what we're trying to change. We want to change the law, and this is kind of a tangent. It's unrelated, and everybody has their own political views, but that's why I support Ron Paul. You can support whoever you want, but Ron Paul will legalize hemp. I don't know about the other ones, but no matter what, we're going to keep persevering with our issues and our cause, we can have a more sane, just, rational world, more ecologically friendly and environmentally friendly, and we need to grow hemp again. Read my book, Hempstone Heritage, and uh, support Vote Hemp and Hemp Industries Association, and we're going to keep doing everything we can do, and uh, peace out. I'm just going to leave you one lap, three seconds of the hempstone, and days that and that. Peace.